Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. And today in this video, I'll be showing you how to use a Cricut cutting machine to make these adorable Halloween pumpkin and witch hat earrings from faux leather and heat transfer vinyl. It's a really easy and fun project. Great if it's your first pair of faux leather earrings with a Cricut. And I have the free SVG file for you on my blog in my resource library. And I'll show you how to grab that so you can make these too. So if you're ready to dive in, let's get started. Okay, let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make these cute jack-o'-lantern with witch hat earrings. I'll be using the Cricut Maker, but you could also use the Explore Air 2 or the Cricut Joy. I'll also be using the purple strong grip cutting mat and the green standard grip cutting mat. This one will cut faux leather and this one will cut the heat transfer vinyl. So the faux leather that I will be using is a solid black and I'm going to put some foil iron on on the back just to add some stiffness and a little pop of color, make the earrings look more professionally finished. And I'll have links to all of the materials that I'm using in the description of this video, as well as in the written tutorial on my blog. The pumpkin and the little um, elements of the hat, I will be cutting from glitter heat transfer vinyl this is Caesar brand. The colors are great. The quality is really nice. You could also use solid orange, solid colors, whatever you prefer. To press the earrings together, I'll be using my Easy Press Mini from Cricut. You could also use a regular Easy Press or even a home iron on a low heat setting with no steam. And I'll be using my pressing pad to protect my work surface when I press. This is a little Teflon cover sheet that I've trimmed down to size. You could use a Teflon sheet or parchment paper or butcher paper when you're pressing your earrings. When I'm um, cutting the faux leather with the Cricut, I'll use some blue painter's tape to tape it down to the mat. And I'll be using my weeding tools, my Cricut weeding tool, my um, or a pin pen if you have one of those, some regular craft scissors. And I will also be using my jewelry making pliers to attach the earring hooks. This is two pair of flat nose jewelry pliers on my blog. It's gonna be design number 187, pumpkin with witch hat earrings. And I will show you how to find that in my library in just a moment. But the design um, that I'm giving you includes the earring holes that you'll cut with the Cricut. But I always like to have my 1 16th inch hole punch on hand to just finish up the holes if they don't cut all the way. Again, I'll have that linked for you. I'll be showing you how to attach earring hooks, just traditional earring hooks with six millimeter jump rings. And I also wanna show you, if you don't wanna use a traditional hook, I wanna show you how you can attach these little stud earrings with these cabochons. And this is a really fun way to dress up your earrings and make them look a little more modern. By the way, if you like this cute little ghost design, this is in uh, this is one of the designs in my Halloween earring SVG bundle. I'll link to that for you. It's super popular in my shop and you might like some of those. And if you do end up doing the stud earrings instead of the hooks, I'll show you um, the studs and the little druzy cabochons, the glittery circles. And I'll be using some yellow top Gorilla Glue for that. So let me hop over to my blog and show you how to get the resource library and get the file. So my blog is amyromeo.com and from the home page. So on my blog at amyromeo.com on this top menu bar, you'll see an option for the resource library. You can click there and scroll down. Um, if you don't already have a password, then you'll need to click on get a password and let me know what email address I should send the password to. You'll get the password right away, return to the resource library, and there will be a little box for you to enter the password. Once you're inside, all of my projects are numbered and you will be looking for number 187, pumpkin with witch hat earrings. It's not here yet, but it will be when you visit the library. So you'll need to click on the blue words and download the SVG. It will be in a zipped folder and you'll want to unzip the folder before you can upload the SVG to Cricut Design Space. And once we're in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on upload image to locate your unzipped loose SVG file 
and you will select it and it will appear here in your recent uploads row. So I will click on it to select it and I will click add to canvas. So once the SVG has loaded into your canvas in Cricut Design Space, you can see there are four different colors of materials we'll be using in this project. The black faux leather for the background and then the heat transfer vinyl shapes will layer on top. These are already sized perfectly for earrings. You could size them a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger if you'd like to just by dragging this arrow or adjusting the size box. I don't recommend adjusting the size too much because then it will make them more challenging to weed. So go ahead and click the make it button. And Design Space will separate all the different materials onto separate mats. So the first one that we'll cut is the black faux leather. And I always like to make a note of the size material that I need to put on the mat and the location of the mat that the material needs to go on. So it looks like I wanna cut a piece of faux leather about three inches square for the black faux leather portion of the earrings. You don't need to mirror any of the mats in this project because both of the earring shapes and designs are symmetrical. So when they cut, they will, they'll work. It, it works, I promise. You don't need to mirror anything. So go ahead and click continue. And I like to cut faux leather using the faux leather paper thin setting. If you don't have that setting, you can click on browse all materials and search for it and then click to select it. The faux leather paper thin setting works with the regular fine point blade that comes with the Cricut Maker, the Explore, and the Joy machines. That's the machine, that's the blade that I use to cut faux leather and it works really well. So I will go ahead and select that. And then for pressure, I always choose more pressure when cutting faux leather. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you how I cut this faux leather portion of the earrings and then we'll return to Cricut Design Space and I will show you how I'm going to cut all of these glitter heat transfer vinyl lids. So I've trimmed a piece of the black faux leather to the size that I noted in the matte preview screen. And then I trimmed a piece of the foil iron-on heat transfer vinyl that I want to put on the back of the faux leather. So this is the pretty side or the textured side of the faux leather. And I am going to flip it over so it's the fuzzy backing and I will put the foil iron-on on the back. So basically the back of the foil iron-on and the back of the faux leather are touching. I'll put them on my heat pressing pad and cover them with my little Teflon sheet. And I've got the Easy Press Mini on the low setting. If you're using a regular Easy Press, I would recommend putting it to about 265 degrees. And I'm just going to iron over the heat transfer vinyl on the faux leather. And this way, when we cut the earring shapes, the iron-on will already be on the back of the faux leather. So you'll get a nice, perfect cut. If you wanna do this with solid heat transfer vinyl, you can. I don't recommend using glitter heat transfer vinyl on the back if you're gonna cut them at the same time. I have a video on four different ways to put a back on faux leather earrings. And I would suggest a different technique that I cover in that video, which is cutting the glitter shape separately and then pressing it on after the cut. But I'll link to that video for you and you can watch it. What I'm showing you now is technique number two from that video. So I want to keep my faux leather nice and flat to keep the foil from wrinkling. I'm gonna just peel up the cover sheet here and you can see how nice and flat the foil is on the back of the faux leather. And I will just press it one more time without the cover sheet, I mean, without the clear protecting sheet, just to get the foil to really stick onto the back of the faux leather. And there we have it. It's a little hard to see. Now I will put this pretty side down, faux leather pretty side down, in the same spot on the mat as I saw in the matte preview screen, which was right up here in this top left corner. And then I'll use the blue painter's tape to tape it down. If you have a brayer, I recommend 
rolling over your piece of faux leather to get it really nice and stuck to your mat. And we'll load it into the Cricut. If this is one of your first times cutting faux leather, you'll want to make sure that these little white star wheels that have ridges are pushed off to the side of your roller bar. That way they won't roll over your faux leather. Press the double arrow button to load the mat. And I'll press the C button to begin the cut. So press the double arrow button to unload. You can check the cut and repeat the cut as many times as necessary. Just don't unload the mat, keep pressing the C button to cut. And here you can see our little shape cut out very nicely. And if the hole doesn't cut all the way through, don't worry about it because we can always punch the hole manually with the hole punch. And there's our other little shape. So there are three other mats that need to cut from the glitter heat transfer vinyl. I'm gonna show you how I get started on the first one and then I will cut the rest of them to save some time and weed them so that they're ready to press. So I've cut my little piece of glitter heat transfer vinyl again to the size shown in my map preview screen. Let me go back over to design space and show you. So the next map that we wanna cut is the orange one and I'm gonna click on edit just to show you how I see what size material I need to cut. Again, these don't need to be mirrored. And for this one, I wanna change my material setting. I like to use glitter vinyl and I like to use default pressure. And sometimes I will repeat the cut when I'm using a nice thick glitter heat transfer vinyl like this Caesar brand is. So let me go ahead and put my heat transfer vinyl face down on my mat. If, it, if your mat is not nice and sticky, then use some blue painter's tape. That always helps. Here it is, and I will go ahead and load the mat. For the other two mats, I will repeat the same process using the purple and the gold, and I will use my sharp weeding tool to weed away the excess so I'm left with only the shapes that need to cut and we'll be ready to press our earrings. So now that I've finished cutting and weeding all of the vinyl shapes and the earrings, I'm going to set them up here on my pressing pad. I still have my Easy Press Mini on the lowest setting. And I'm just going to trim these apart. Now these pumpkins will have a left and a right, so we'll need to figure out which one is which before we press. These little elements are not as sensitive to size. There we go. Okay, so these are in place and ready to press. Again, I'll cover them with my little Teflon sheet and press for just five to seven seconds. This will be hot, so be careful. Try to peel back the cover sheet and if the vinyl peels up with the cover sheet then just place it right back down and press again but this looks good let me show you how cute those look then we'll go ahead and put on our little purple band for the witch hat and I designed these earrings so that you could mix and match the band colors you could make the pumpkin in solid or glitter, whatever you prefer. We'll peel that up. You can see that cute little pop of purple with the foil on the back, but that is optional. And the last part will be the little buckle for the witch hat. Okay. 
And that's that. Whoops. Aren't they cute? They're a little hard to see, but they are very sparkly and very cute. Now the little holes didn't cut all the way through with the Cricut, but that's okay because I'm going to use the 1 16th inch hole punch and just make those little holes real quick. The nice thing is when the Cricut tries to make the hole, it will make a little mark so it's easier for you to see where the hole should go. I like to put the earrings front to back so they're lined up perfectly and that way the holes will be in the same spot on both earrings. And you can punch these both at one time. Just punch. There we go. And we've got a nice little hole up there. So let me show you first how to put on a regular earring hook and then I'll show you how to use those little studs. So this is a six millimeter jump ring and this is a regular earring hook. The earring hook loop, we need to turn that with pliers. We need to turn it 90 degrees so that it's facing a different direction so the earrings will hang straight. And let me show you how I do that. I grasp the earring hook between my thumb and forefinger very tightly and then using flat nose pliers, I grab the loop and I just twist 90 degrees. So instead of the hook, oh, let me see if I can show you this. Instead of the hook being this direction, now the hook, I'm not sure if you can see that, the hook is facing forward. Okay, so we need both of our, if you're putting hooks on both, you need to do this for both. And then I will open up the jump ring I like to use two pliers to open the jump ring. I put the opening of the jump ring facing up at the 12 o'clock position and then pliers, I grip on one side of the 12 o'clock and with the other flat nose pliers, I grip on the other side and I just twist up with my wrist to open up that loop. And I'll just put on the little earring and I will put on the earring hook and then re reverse that same wrist movement. And that's that, how cute is that? So if you wanted to do these little studs, on Amazon, I bought a package of these that have uh, multiple sizes. And the reason I bought this pack is because it has the loop going in the direction that I want it to go in. So. This is the, a bezel set stud and we're gonna glue the little cabochon right in there. Can you see this loop down here? This loop is facing in the direction that we need it to be. Like I just showed you how we turn the earring hook. This is the direction that we need the loop to be so that these earrings will hang straight. A lot of these studs on Amazon that have the loop have the loop going sideways and you cannot use pliers to twist it like you can with the earring hooks, it will break. So I'll link to these for you. This is a special listing that I found. The only drawback is it does have multiple sizes. But the good news is these little druzy cabochons come in lots of different sizes and I'll link to them for you. Basically, the box is assorted full of all these cute little colors. So let's see, what should we do? Maybe we'll do orange. These are in a stainless steel finish. So I will use from my little jump ring box, I will use the color that is closer to stainless steel. And again, we'll open the jump ring. And attach the earring, attach the stud, close it up again. I like to do this first so that I have something to hold on to while I apply the glue. So this is just a little tray and this little 12 millimeter cabochon is gonna fit perfectly inside. So I like to use the yellow Gorilla Top Glue because it does have a brush and you don't need a lot of glue. I'm just gonna brush here inside the little tray and then drop the druzy in. Isn't that cute? So let me know in the comments which version you liked better, the one with the regular earring hook or the one with the Druzy cabochons. 
Also let me know if you're gonna try these in glitter heat transfer vinyl or in solid colors, I'd love to know. So again, if you like this project, I also wanted to show you, I have these really cute skulls on my blog, skull earrings, and I will link to that for you. This is also in my free resource library. So if you're enjoying making Halloween earrings, you'll wanna grab these. And don't forget to check out my Halloween earring SVG bundle, which is also in my shop. It's been very popular and I know you'll love a lot of those shapes. And if you love this project, I hope that you will subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Cricut earring tutorials that I think you will really enjoy. And thank you for watching.